everybody. Well, this is our last Sunday, Gloria and I's last Sunday to be um, in Chardon Assembly of God as pastors. I just, I just spoke to the congregation. I hope you guys will let me come back every once in a while. I'd like to come back and uh, we're not that far away. We're four hours away. So we hope we could get to come back and, and be with you. I hope, that, I hope you invite me back and there's like a hundred people sitting in here. That would be awesome. And so but God has a path. We've heard from the Lord in our worship time that God is going to guide us and he's going to lead us. And I believe he has some really awesome things in store for this church. Well, when I was thinking about what could I preach about on my last Sunday here, and how many of you know that I spent a good deal of my time preaching about the last days and Jesus coming back and heaven and all those things. We spent a good amount of time on the book of Revelation. So I thought I would talk to you today about a place where we never have to say goodbye. There is a place where we'll never, ever have to say goodbye. And so we're going to talk about that today. You know, the other day, Gloria asked me if I knew how to tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile. And I said, I don't do you. And she said, of course, it's easy. One you see later and the other after a while. Did you get the, see you later, alligator, after a while, got that? Okay. That was, that was a good one. I, that one made me laugh. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I ask that you would bless me as I bring your word, pour out your spirit upon us, anoint us, help me to say what I need to say, help us to hear what we need to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So there's this man who died and he went to heaven and Peter was there at the pearly gates waiting for him, and St. Peter said to him, welcome to heaven, but hey, before you go in and talk to the big guy, I'm curious, what is one of the best acts of kindness that you ever did in your life? And the guy, just he was just excited to be in the heaven, and, and he said, well, Peter, believe it or not, one time I was just minding my own business, and there was this little old lady who was about to be attacked by this huge group of, of hell's angels. And um, they were some of the biggest, meanest guys I, I've ever seen in my life. And they were about to attack this little old lady and take her purse from her. And suddenly this sense of bravery and courage came upon me. And I stepped out in front and I said, you will not touch her. And St. Peter said, but you're not a very big guy. You really did that? And he goes, yes, sir, I did. And St. Peter said, well, when exactly did this happen? And the guy said, well, I'm guessing maybe two or three minutes ago is when this all went down. So today, we're going to talk about the subject of heaven. Because as you know, this is our last Sunday with you and as pastor. And when I was thinking about what I wanted wanted to talk about, it came to me that there is a place where the world, where the word goodbye doesn't exist. So that's why I want to talk to you about heaven this morning. Now, truthfully, most people don't really have a clue about what heaven will really be like. Uh, In fact, if you ask people, what do you think What do you believe about heaven? And a lot of people would say that their beliefs about heaven were formed maybe from hearing like a corny story like I just told. Or or some people would say, well, I believe something about heaven because I've seen it in different movies, the way heaven is portrayed. And you know, if you grew up when I did, you might think that God is looks a little bit like George Burns in the movie Oh God. Or, or you might say, well, God looks more like Morgan Freeman from Bruce Almighty. And, and, and the sad reality is that most people, and that would include maybe some of us in this room today, many of us, we don't really understand what heaven is like. In fact, a lot of people, when they think about heaven, they see it as a never-ending church service. I mean, there's people who I've come across people who go, oh, really, heaven, it's going to be so boring, we're just going to be... Or some people think we're going to be like little fat babies floating around on clouds playing a harp, you know, with a diaper on or something, you know. And, um, you know, at my age, the last thing I want to think about is wearing a diaper. And so, um, you know, we're, that's not what heaven is. And, and, and sometimes they see 
people will see themselves like they have to wear choir robes and they're sitting around all day singing and it's it's kind of cool for a little while but then maybe you know a hundred years later you're, you're going to go like hey when's this worship service ever going to end and, and i mean some of you may be thinking to yourself we, we just sang like five songs in church and that was more than enough for me so i mean how in the world am i going to do this forever and ever in heaven well the reality is most people don't understand that heaven is going to be like. And and I think there's a reason for this. Let me take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So none of us, according to this scripture, none of us can even fathom uh, what heaven is actually going to be like. So as I talk about that in this message today, let me just say up front that I realize that no matter what I do, I'm probably going to fail at this message because the Bible says nobody's seen, no mind understands all the good things that God has stored up for us. So I was thinking, how can I put heaven into words? Well, maybe some of you can think of a time when you had one of those moments where you just think, man, I wish... This would last forever. And you thought, life doesn't get any better than this. Well, those who are believers in Jesus, not only does it get better, but in heaven, it is infinitely and indescribably better than you could even imagine. And and the reason so many of us can't even get our minds around it is because I'm going to tell you this morning that, believe it or not, heaven in our culture is under attack. Satan was a guy who actually lived in heaven. Did you know that? He actually was there. And the Bible tells us that he, at one point, decided he wanted to be like God. And God said, well, you can't have that job. I already have it. And so he cast Satan out of heaven. And a third of the angels followed him out, and they became known as what we would call demons today. And so I believe since that time, Satan has been lying to us, especially about eternity. Satan's probably trying to convince us that hell doesn't exist, or at least maybe it's not that bad. You know, you've heard it when people will say, oh, I, I don't mind going to hell because at least I'll be with all my friends partying in hell. You know, if the devil can convince you of that, then you have no fear of God whatsoever. And secondly, we have no real sense of urgency to tell people who are far from God and the love of Jesus Christ. When we think, oh, it's okay, we're just all going to go to hell and we're going to have a big... It's not going to be that. The Bible says it's all day. It says day and night. Get this. It wants to make sure that you know it's all the time. All day and all night. There will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It never stops, the punishment. So Satan is attacking the idea of heaven. And and I'll give you two lies. I, I believe that he wants us to believe about heaven. The first one is this. He wants us to believe that heaven can wait. It it may be a good place to go, but we shouldn't be in any urgency to get there. Because the reality is a lot of us we're pretty happy with the way things are right now in our lives uh, here on earth. And if we're really honest, many of us would have to admit the incredibly hard truth that our treasure, which Jesus talked about, is more here on earth than it is in heaven. In other words, most of the things we care about are here on earth and not in heaven. Our hearts drift more towards the things of this world than they do towards the things of the world to come. And a lot of us want to go there one day, but our heart isn't there. Our heart's not wanting to go. Our heart isn't thinking about heaven. Now, I'm getting older. I'm 65 now. I'm finding that the older I get, the more I do think about what eternity has for me, because, of course, my parents have both gone on to heaven. My in-laws, my wife's parents have both gone on to heaven. 
most of our aunts and uncles, I think almost all of our aunts and uncles, are probably already gone into eternity. And so the more that I'm seeing that generation and realize I'm the next generation, I start thinking more about things of eternity. Maybe those of you who are like me, who are around the same age I am, it's easier to start thinking in, in those terms. But the fact is, I still have some things on this earth I'm looking forward to. But here's the deal. I always thought God would come before I'd get my driver's license. You know, I was like 15, and I think God's going to come. He, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to schedule my test for my driver's license. God's going to come the day before. Or then I thought, well, God will come, Jesus will come before I get to graduate high school or before I get to go to college or before I get married. You know, first of all, I've been driving forever and I ended up driving for a living. That's God's sense of humor, by the way. And now I've been married for 40 years and, and the, it's been good. I like being married to Gloria. I, I'm pretty sure she likes being married to me most, most of the time. And like what, maybe 60, 70% of the time, it's, it's okay. Yeah, she said, that's okay. So, um, but I need to start laying up treasures in heaven, meaning I need to start thinking more about heaven than about here. And that's hard to do because we're in the moment. It was earlier I was talking to Oral, and it's really hard all, all, everything that has happened to us in the last few months fell into place the minute we took our hands off of it and let God, and it's really hard to do that, isn't it? And it's the same thing with heaven. If I start taking my hands off the earth, then that begins to be really, really hard. But when I start looking around, and I don't know if you're like this or not, but when I start looking around, I start to realize that um, heaven is... Um, the place I need to be thinking of because I'm getting less attached to the world every day because they don't follow my values.